start the episode with saying that Glenn has turned his knob all the way to the ceiling. <laughs> Talk about starting the episode. What about starting the day today? You two. KJ, now... get, KJ gets on the thing and leaves a message. Hello, everybody. The weather is cold. <laughs> Things are dying. Have a great day. <laughs> That's how we deal with winter depression here in in Scandinavia, you know. (laughs) Great pep talk. (laughs) Luckily, it's only going to get worse from here. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, Yeah, for a couple of months, just everything dying and it's getting darker and colder and more miserable. Yeah. And in a in a couple of weeks, when you are trying to have a good time, getting together with some friends, and nope, now we're gonna adjust the clock to make it even worse, and we're stealing an hour, so you're gonna wake up hungover much earlier than you initially planned. <laughs> you get an extra hour in bed, don't we? Well, that depends yeah. how you use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and if you have kids, I'm using animals. it for an extra hour in bed. If if you have gone to bed before that switch, if you're not using it, ooh, I can stay up another hour. That's that's <laughs> going to burn you hard. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Is it today? Oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's nice to have something to fill your week with to uh, procrastinate everything else. So, but I, I promised I was going to rant about <laughs> work before we started the episode. So, let's not go there. Um, but yeah. My edit, my intro, welcome. <laughs> this is the number one crude mistakes podcast with Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient, and an especially peppy Hovard from Behind the Mistakes. <laughs> welcome. Hello, Hello. and Hello. congratulations. Yeah, you can call me Mr. 4K now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you're so crisp on the video. <laughs> yeah, I- I've been playing the... The four candles <laughs> sketched in my head the entire week. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm down a subscriber now, so uh, I'm just uh, two subscribers away from being back at 3,900 something. So <laughs> I'm not sitting very comfortable in my chair. <laughs> it's good that you celebrate when you, have, when, when you actually have something, something to celebrate then. Yeah. So good on you. Yeah, Good on me. I mean, how, how long? Doing. Yeah, how long have you been just shy of four thousand? Since we met him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> more or less, I feel. A good year. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I got a message. I haven't gotten it before, but sometimes I get random messages from YouTube, and they're probably trying out some new features. And it's like, congratulations on three years on YouTube, and I haven't been on. I mean, I had a subscription for three years, but I haven't been posting things for three years. So it's, <laughs> I think uh, we have different timelines. How long have you been posting things for? I think it's uh, roughly two two years. Hi, um, this is the editor with some side information. I just checked and the first YouTube video I published was on October 3rd, 2021. So, it's three years. YouTube was right. I was wrong. <laughs> you were doing it be- way before me, weren't you? Yeah, I started YouTube in 2019. So, yeah, I'm coming up on my fifth here. Oh, he was a big boy. Is that <laughs> you, Grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, looking at the subscriber count, it doesn't really look like it. <laughs> I mean, I think me and, and and the Swedish maker started roughly at the same time. He's a bit yeah. ahead of me when it comes uh, to subscribers. As you said, who's Just a tiny, counting? tiny smidge. Yeah, <laughs> only 99,500 KJ. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if it makes you feel any better, KJ, per views, you get more subscribers than me. <laughs> so that's the, pretty the, good going I mean, the sad thing is at some point I'm probably going to end up having more subscribers on TikTok 
the way it's going because it's been pouring in people there the last couple of weeks. So I'm soon going to have more subscribers there than on Instagram. I don't communicate with anyone there, but the numbers are just racking in. And at some point, I'm probably... All right, I need to uh, to shoot my videos now for uh, TikTok. Though. You need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> like Double down. Small... Yeah. <laughs> but I like those small red plus signs when you log on. <laughs> it's a drug. <laughs> <laughs> Run while you still can. <laughs> ah. Before China owns all of your life. They, they, I mean, they already do. I mean, I'm, I'm already <laughs> shipping all my disposable income through AliExpress. <laughs> that being said, I got... Uh, I'm really oppressed. Uh, oppressed. <laughs> <laughs> you Sorry, are China. Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, Fro- Fro- Freudian slip there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna see I'm banned from TikTok within this episode. <laughs> <so bad. laughs> Would be good for uh, you. But yeah, I mean, I ordered the steering wheel for the tractor build, and I think it was here in a week. And I got a message right before uh, we started recording here that also the fuel tank and the fuel lines are in the country. I I thought it was at least a couple of weeks before I could expect to have them here. But yeah, that means that... Uh, I might run my tractor at this weekend. So I'm a farmer now. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's good to hear that you don't need to make a snow plow to actually be able to use it. Yeah, that's the thing, though. So, someone is, of course, uh, pissing on my parade saying, well, it's, it's not a, you're not a farmer unless you have something uh, dangling at the back of your tractor. So uh, the question <laughs> is, do I need to fit wheels on my... Uh, KitchenAid, or should I make some other lethal contraption to put behind it? But that is a good idea for a project. And I mean, they are giving away those uh, trailer attachment to it, so uh, converting one should be. Sounds like a whole series of videos of our KitchenAid, <laughs> long-handled hedge trimmer. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I've been watching Amazon Prime and Clarkson's <laughs> Farm has really struck a chord with the people. So, so maybe the farmer <laughs> topic is the way to go. I mean, I have been looking for a niche. <laughs> Sweetheart, look at the garden. I've made a plow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be awesome. Yeah. That being said, I need to need to keep my eyes up on marketplaces and uh yeah even in stores for good sales basically because we are at the end of the season where everything is dying so you might get hedge trimmer kind of cheap because i i got some other ideas for motorizing uh, kitchen appliances uh, i just remembered here the other day um uh, while I was looking through some cupboards and so on, I, I found a coffee grinder, and I remember Laura Kampf made that uh, electrically powered coffee grinder, and I thought, no, this should surely be two-stroke. So, <laughs> And I, I got all the parts, uh, the angle drive, everything, except the engine itself, so I need at least one for that. So, yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh, you got an engine-powered... Um... Lawnmower. I kind of forgot what they were called for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We just dragged that behind you. It's a fly mower as well, a hover mower, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, the extension cord you need. <laughs> Did I not just say, is it petrol powered? No, oh, it's electric. Uh, yeah. okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, the petrol that. powers are really far and few between here. I, I, I've seen them, but then they're from the 80s. But yeah, oh, okay. ours not. <laughs> Making your ride along lawn mower, yeah. based on a toy tractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we have established that we need to, uh, or I need to look into that, and it's just another project I have piled on to my lists. Uh, but 
that is just future dreams and whatnot. But you've actually published a video since last, KJ. Yeah. Yeah, surprised everyone, myself included, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it saved my day going to work uh, in the drizzling rain and uh, contemplating the this your your message about everything dying and all right, but there is a video I'm looking forward to watching <laughs> while I having two minutes to myself. I yeah. thought it was quite funny that we both decided to watch that video while we were both at work being paid. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice being paid to watch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, luckily it was short. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I've, I've been contemplating making a, a video about the, the microphone stand camera holder. And then in the latest episode of making it, Bob talked about that he was going to do a follow-up video to his camera stand uh, video. So I thought, oh, damn it, I need to get mine out before that. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I might have to revise everything. So I also thought that I really should live up more to my... Uh, to my name and not be spending weeks polishing a third of a video that only gets a hundred views. I should do something quick and simple instead. So this, uh, I'm calling this a one, two, three build because it took one hour to script it, two hour to film it and three hour to edit it. Oh, fantastic. Uh, so <laughs> I, I took two hours off Monday yeah, after lunch and just filmed everything and edited it in the, in the evening and ready to go and just, Leave it to it. <laughs> well, I think how, the camera how, cr stands. how crude, but delightfully efficient. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. I think the camera stand itself is pretty genius. That's yeah, fantastic. And yeah, it, it works really well. And uh, and I got uh, the message from uh, Rolf, the Norwegian maker, that he's been using that style for the last ten years. And oh he's, wow! He's an audio engineer, so he. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, at least it works in. Those kind of things. So that that it feels like that someone has tried it for a long time. So I'm not doing something stupid here. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure, though, and that is my. I mean, the only downside is the vibration part. Um, what if you get one of those engines that they use to to make well, basically vibrators? I guess, but. And you just team that with an Arduino and a sensor, and you can actually offset the vibration, so you can have active <laughs> vibration damping. You just clamp it on the shaft, and I mean, we were, the microphone stand. We we're talking about the microphone stand here. People, <laughs> get your heads out of the gutter. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, yeah, that could probably work, but it feels awfully tedious and a lot of programming and fiddling with small parts and. Yeah, as I said in the video, it's not really that much of a problem. Uh, of course, I haven't tried it outside with the wind blowing. That might be a problem for it. I don't know, um, but we'll have to see about that. But so far, it's been working fine. What about your editing? Two KJs at one in one in one screen. <laughs> was that a bit much? <laughs> it was visually very good, KJ. Visually very good. <laughs> 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 One KJ for each eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of fun. And I, I actually got the uh, Da Vinci Audio Autosync to work. Uh, I, nice. that I, I knew that where it, what it was. I actually found it. And it it was only for because I did a lot of uh, recording the audio on one phone and filming with the other phone. So I can be far away from the camera. And what on, only one of the... Uh, clips paired that I that I didn't work on, but the rest of them, it found the, uh, it found it perfectly. So I think in most cases I didn't even mute the other audio so source, so it was a double audio uh, as well. Yeah. So you got <laughs> actually got two KJs both visually and aud audibly. Oh, so that was why your voice was so rich and. Yeah, <laughs> rich and full. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I could probably have spent a little more time working on the audio levels and try to normalize it a bit more, but I didn't. Yeah, the the plan was to do it crudely. So, so that was it was. I think it came out brilliantly. Well done, mate. Yeah. And you got a video out as well, H. I did, but I didn't build anything i mean it's just the second half of uh, <laughs> the previous video i just chopped into two so 
Yeah, and that is, of course, my plan for the this week is to release the third part. So I've lined up all the clips, but it it need the brunt part of the editing, and then of course editing the podcast as well. So it's going to be a a tight week uh, in front of the computer. Uh, so. <laughs> Not as much time in the workshop as I would have liked, maybe, but yeah, hopefully I'll get it out. But then, of course, I've run out of material, so then I have to to actually build and film the the fourth installment. But I mean, if, if the last message is right, I should have all the parts, so I, I should have what I need to finish it. So that's nice. So it's, it's the fourth installment, the final one, then. Oi, oi. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> if we are looking, I mean, if you're disregarding all the attachment that we, we just recently talked about, I'm not sure if it's going to be four videos or a fifth, um, because the major issue and what's going to take the most fabricating uh, is making the the sleeves for the back tires. Because I mean, the working title is the drift tractor because I want to go sideways with it. So I need to fit sleeves on them because it's not powerful enough to make the wheel spin on its own. But they don't make those sleeves for those tires. So I have to either find uh, some tubes or bucket that fit that dimension. If not, I need to roll the plate and weld it together so it actually fits around the tire. And then that should be... A fifth video, I think, and where I also drive the thing. So I have some ideas for the actually uh, driving part video. Can you not 3D print them? <laughs> you know, Probably I... not the outside, but maybe a sleeve for a sleeve, so to say. I mean, you... touching the Probably gravel that for the outside, explode. but I think <laughs> it's a good idea. But I think my 3D printer is a few centimeters shy of being able to print it in one go and of course doing it in sections and gluing it together. I mean, that's a recipe for disaster, <laughs> I think. So, yeah. But it's good. Do I know someone with a, a bit larger 3D printer? Hmm. All right, I'll look into that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, we've been seeing snows on the mountain peaks, uh, getting closer and closer to us so uh yeah i'm also on a deadline here because uh i would like to move things inside so but then again if we get snow and ice on the road i don't need the sleeves so yeah, exactly. maybe that's a win yeah <laughs> the best kind of project just wait and nature will solve it for you <laughs> yes maybe I've that's started i started keeping my eye on the weather for oslo it's uh it's not that dissimilar to here at the moment to be fair only a few degrees cooler. Yeah. I think you're a long way off snow and ice, aren't you? Hope so, anyway. Who knows with climate change <laughs> and all of that? Maybe we won't get any snow anymore, or maybe we get <laughs> only snow forever. <laughs> <laughs> that would be... Cold? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say bleak, but yeah, cold. <laughs> both I, mean, I, so, I, I, I would survive i would adapt uh, but yeah i would of course be pissed but <laughs> I'm, I'm usually that half the time anyway so <laughs> <laughs> so glenda are you feeling left out uh, not having projects to uh... very very much so i mean i did release a little short yesterday <laughs> <laughs> Just to keep your nose above the water. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even even edited. That was just a clip filmed on the phone and put straight out to some music. Yeah, no, I am. I'm still in a well, still in a world of resin and sanding and chestnutting. So, yeah, it's going well now, though. It's uh, <laughs> it's um, chestnutting. What is? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ah. Yeah, my mind derailed as well. <laughs> I think I think I've done with the resin part of it now. Hmm? I've got to make some cuts on it now, and that's when I came across my my another stumbling block today. Is my circular saw will not cut at ninety degrees perfectly, so uh, hmm. I'm borrowing a circular saw, but not till the weekend. So, 
So it's just sat there now for a few days, not doing anything. Yeah, and so then what's... you realize that when you're angling the blade, it doesn't cut as deep because the <laughs> angular cut is longer than a 90 degree yeah. one. And you're going to realize, fuck, I can't even cut through it. And then. <laughs> And at some point, you will do some design changes, mm -hmm. and yeah, well, I'll just cut a straight shade anyway. So all the time you never spend filling in epoxy on <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> the edge is just going to be futile. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what else are you going to do to it, to the slab? Um, I've, I've got to cut 125 mil strip off the end, off the flat side, not the live edge side, which is going to become a shelf in this bathroom. And then I've got to put some uh, channeling underneath to stop it cutting, uh, cupping, sorry. Mm. And then a few coats of varnish. Oh, and so it's not that, not that bad. No, but it's just it's a shame, really, because I probably would have had it finished by the weekend. But yeah, probably be this time next week. We'll probably still be talking about <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> that will still be in the workshop. That uh, cut sounds a bit nerve wracking to do. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that long and you don't want it to drift and mess stuff up or yeah i mean i've made a few cuts with my circular saw and i mean it's it was a 20 quid markdown circular saw from years ago and it burnt its way through the first few cuts and then today when i put up put a square up against it it's just not square at all so it will not do for the uh for the finished job i've put too much time and effort into it to you know, mess it up with a shitty saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was when when we did uh, we did a fix to the kitchen a long time ago before we re redid it and installed a new uh, uh, countertop. We had to cut the old one, so we got it off and got it out. And yeah, I got this old circular saw; it will be fine. And we started cutting, and halfway through, we'd blow, blow the fuse. And it was just, <laughs> okay, so here we stand with a half cut. <laughs> this is not good for anyone. And this saw, we don't trust it anymore. Uh, so then we had to finish the cut with uh, the jigsaw instead. And that feels good to, to cut oh straight God. with. <laughs> oh. But yeah, but uh, it was my wife who did it, so it came out nice. <laughs> She managed to cut it straight with the jigsaw. That yeah, was straight enough. Yeah. Yeah. Good on her. That's that's some bloody skill, that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. And then, uh, <laughs> if I was going to try that, I, I don't think there's enough uh, cock in the world to fill the crevices uh, <laughs> between the wall and the <laughs> countertop. <laughs> you said cork, right? Yeah. 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 Cork. <laughs> <laughs> We're still in the gutter. <laughs> yeah, I think circular saws are my most feared tool, actually. I've, I've been, had one explode on me a few years ago. Mm. Yeah, nice. The, explode in what way? The guard came undone and got tangled up with the blade. and <laughs> That sounds nice. Broke the blade and broke the guard and cut my hand. Oh, the soap. Oh, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> yeah, it was an ouch, yes, definitely. <laughs> So I've, I've always just been a little bit scared of the circular saw ever since. I would too. Yeah, it's funny, give me a table saw or a lathe or anything else, I'm not bothered. But uh, yeah, circular saw, still got a little bit of fear for that one. They are know. spinning very, very fast. And I mean, they're not attached to anything, so it can go willy-nilly. Yeah. Drop it <laughs> in your lap. and <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> oh. No, a, a new fear is unlocked. Uh, <laughs> but it is weird, though. I, I'm more afraid of the table saw than the circular saw. And I, I have this miniature one that I just use for, uh, well, not the big cuts, but just cutting off ends and for outdoor projects and, and so on. And I'm just wielding that like a toddler with a toy sword. <laughs> and, of course, it's the the most dangerous setup and tool compared to the to the table saw but once i used the table so it's like all right i should not stand in line with the blade i'm constantly thinking <laughs> what if i slip here because i've dropped the banana in my workshop i, I never eat bananas in my workshop but I still, I, i'm afraid that there's going to be a banana peel i'm going to slip on there and then then i'm of course i'm going to try to cushion the fall with my hand and i'm going to just go at the blade and then it's going to drag me in and cut my head off. I mean, it's, it's all those scenarios using the table saw, but 
outside with the original. circular saw. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but outside with the circular saw. I like that. The He Man <laughs> tune is like, that and just cutting all <laughs> left and right. <laughs> It must have to do with how much you've used it, how how comfortable you are using it. Because I mean, if I feel the same with the table saw and the router, I, I've used it so little that it feels it feels scary, and <laughs> I have to be okay. Now this is a spinny part. Do not touch it. It doesn't look scary. Uh, it doesn't look like it's spinning, perhaps, but it is, and it's gonna <laughs> kill you. Uh, so yeah, I mean uh, that is what scares me the most is the router. I I got, I think it's a three horsepower router engine in that tiny table, and I was doing some cuts and I was just removing some tabs of some material, and then it suddenly just it grabbed, and something happened. It's like bang, and everything flew out of my hands, <laughs> and uh, the I mean like what and you're shaking all right i have some pieces left so you just continue and it happened once more and i still can't understand what happened there and there was a few minutes where the engine was acting weird and of course did it fuck up some of the alignment of the the guiding screw or whatever but yeah it that's a scary tool to me <laughs> yeah, I mean, when it does the, like a magic trick, poof, and the thing you're holding it has disappeared from your hands <laughs> and it's on the other side of the room. That's yeah, yeah it's it's yeah. an eye opener. Had that happen? Yeah. That doesn't bother me either. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> funny. <laughs> the last time that happened, you say it came out something. It felt like something had come out of a line of art. Mine, my router had decided to start unscrewing itself from the table. <laughs> <laughs> that was the problem there. <laughs> That, that it does it well. I, I even put Loctite on those bed leveling pinion screws or something, yeah. but I, I regularly have to dig through some remnants of sawdust in the collector bin. Just, oh, there is one and there is one. So, <laughs> question is, should I just set them at the level and just weld them in place? Um, but, yeah. <laughs> What's also dangerous is just a big slab of wood as well, I've learnt on Saturday. So I've, I've been filling the live edge recently of the uh, chestnut. I've got some knobbly bobbly bits, as I've been calling them. So I've been having to prop the wood up vertically and build dams with blue tape and hot glue and all sorts to <laughs> get the, <laughs> get the uh, uh, resin to sit in their level, which I managed to do quite successfully. But on Saturday night, I walked in there and one of the dams had bust and it was leaking down the down the slab so i started putting more tape on it which um, interrupted the way it was balanced and it uh, landed on my big toe and my safety crocs did not stop it hurting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's still hurting a bit but it's strangely numb at the moment <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably fine. It's probably, yeah. And that strange color it is is probably yeah. fine as well. I'm just keeping it up. If it turns green, then I might be worried. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it, if it turns a dark blue purple, then uh, just get the circular saw and cut it off before you get an infection and it spreads. <laughs> I'll, yeah. use, I'll use the table so it'll be safer for me. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or the router. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just uh, make sure you use a two fluid bit. <laughs> <laughs> Self amputation in the workshop. That's a video that might not get monetized. <laughs> oh. If I was going to use a table so I would stand like this, in the router I would hold it like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. When they, talk about, they were talking about router bits on the bad audio group today. And um, they were talking about fluted bits. And obviously I know what a two fluted bit and a three fluted bit is. But then you start talking about spiral up cuts and spiral down cuts. I haven't got a clue what that's all about. Do you understand what's going on there? It is both yes and no. Um, the, the spiraling thing, I understand because I had to learn it when I used to see and see where I want a nice cut. And of course, if you have a, a thick enough material uh, and you want a nice cut on both sides so then of course you use a up cut down cut it means that it it shares from the outsides and in 
uh, so it doesn't break off any flicks at the end. But of course, it will also compress all the shavings in the middle, so it it compacts very easily. So you might mm-hmm. not okay. run it as, as fast or as slow, uh, depending on the material. But mm-hmm. With the questions to how many flutes is the best, I have one and two and, and three, but what is best for what? I mean, what will give you the most heat input and what cuts the... I, I have no idea. And trying to read <laughs> up on it, it's, it's a million pages of a million opinions, uh, so I haven't got a clear answer. So I'm, I just <laughs> I just chuck something in and, all right, this doesn't seem to work, so all right, I'll just uh, take it slower then and... I mean, it must be feeds and speeds and material and all that. A lot of parameters to adjust. So there's not one clear answer. It no, and it's also counterintuitive. Um, sometimes you, you can have a bet and like, all right, it, it cuts poorly. And all right, I'll just speed down. And you know, they, this doesn't seem to help. And then after you have fucked around with it for way too long, you then start to read the manual and some of them come with this chart saying what's the most optimal speed range for various materials and you actually figure out, all right, I should have run it twice as fast, both in feed rate and in rotational speed and you try that and it feels very wrong, but then it cuts nicely like butter, but Hmm. yeah. Uh, that's a whole world I'm not I have no clue I feel and as you said it's not really intuitive all the time so yeah but talking about the new world and intuitive I've actually ran my 3D printer without building that boat I'm so Mm. pleased (laughs) nice so what have you built first time yeah out of the box so it's it's really good I mean I did they say you can have it up and running in 15 minutes. Uh, I spent almost two weeks getting it out of the box. So, uh, yeah, I was a bit behind, but uh, and uh, fumbled a bit setting it up uh, and so on. But once that was going and a few YouTube videos, because I didn't want to go through the tutorials where they print that boat, so I needed to find something else that also showed what I needed to show. But, yeah, I did not... I mean, I I could draw my 3D models as I usually do, and the tool takes care of all the internals and support and so automatically. So, yeah, and the finish, I I did not expect it to be that good. So, yeah. Nice. You did basically make a flat plate, though. It's pretty 2D, your 3D print, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah, I could I could easily have made it in half the time on the table (laughs) saw. So have have the family been uh, <coughs> hanging out at Thingiverse and making a long list of toys and whatnots that they want printed? Um, I, I haven't uh, told them about that page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course, the, the wife was on me relatively uh, early on. It's like, all right, I want this uh, Lego hand holder for my headsets at work. Uh, and like, uh, so you need to get yellow filament. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> But that's the only plan, and I, I don't have like a long list of projects that I now I'm gonna make. So it's it's gonna be on a uh, need to make basis for other projects. But uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's more like completing a set of tools, isn't it? You know, it's just it's just an enabler. You know, when it does when the time does come, f- the need arises for a three D print. It's there, isn't it? Then yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. You don't have to just use the heck out of them because you've got them, do you? No, it's it's the same with my. I have this. Uh, what's it called? The uh, the circular saw with the the guides and everything. I, I don't. Saw, yeah. yeah, the track saw. And I bought that a, f- a couple of years ago, and I think I've used it twice. So it's not getting a lot of runtime. But for those two projects where you need really need it, it's like being able to go and get it and like, get a perfectly straight cut. That is worth the price. Yeah. You could nip over before the weekend with it. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you can bring the slab in two weeks. <laughs> I'm happy to cut it for you. <laughs> I'll just bring the end that needs cutting. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's uh, easier. <laughs> 
<laughs> that being said, though, I did order some stickers last night, uh, so I'm gonna restock on the Scopet Festival, and so yeah, I got some uh, special edition stickers coming. <laughs> nice, unless they're de- delayed in the mail. Then, <laughs> this the new design that you ran past us last night? Yeah, yeah, they went down well with my family. <laughs> yeah, and I I also found that uh, they have this option where you can. Uh, actually print your QR code or whatever on the back side on the paper that you pulls off so I don't have to have the the QR code integrated in the picture as uh, KJ did so um, I can still keep that round format and have the QR code at the back so yeah nice maybe uh, maybe we'll drop a, a sneak peek in the in the socials, but or maybe after the Scarpet Festival, and if you if you really want an early peak, you have to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's quite fair on everybody. Care <laughs> Yeah, there are you know, planes from all over the world going to Oslo. I think so. <laughs> yes, it's only a couple of airports away. So, <laughs> <laughs> is it worth it? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well it's gonna be fun and it's i mean looking at the calendar it's it's soon just a couple of weeks nice. yes what mm-hmm. date is it i don't remember it's the last 25th. weekend of october <laughs> <laughs> 20 something to yeah, 20 something, yeah. two days later hmm I don't even know why I'm asking. I don't know what date it is today. So. <laughs> Are you sure that you're a grown-up with it's a grown-up che- job? It's Tuesday. <laughs> That's all I need to know, really. <laughs> yeah, two weeks and a bit. Oh, cool. uh, or uh, when this is published, uh, two weeks exactly. Wow. Ah, uh, yeah, we're still on the main episode. Oh, I got uh, confused there with all the sexual innuendo felt like we were <laughs> deep into the half pint already <laughs> yeah. pull it back pull it out yeah, oh, I said, um, god i hope i've made something by the time we go there i can't talk about bloody chestnut for the live podcast as well can i <laughs> you can polish some knobs and bring over <laughs> <laughs> yeah that did provide some good content last week didn't it oh it sure did yeah. that's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> this is Glenn. He's from England. He's going to show us his knobs. <laughs> no. I only bought one with me. I can only show you my one knob today. <laughs> but it's very shiny. <laughs> I thought you had a collection of a lot of knobs that you got them from all different places. <laughs> uh, so I mean... <laughs> Knob Doctor is going to stick, isn't it? So if you can just start collecting because no, no one's going to let this one go, I guess. <laughs> I wish I was in Glenn with a trench coat with a lot of uh, things hanging on Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Have them on the inside. That would be awesome. <laughs> I've got a small collection of knobs somewhere in the workshop. I'll bring them. Yeah. I'll make a trench coat. <laughs> with no <laughs> doctor on the back <laughs> yeah, that's great that's uh, we, if not for Scarpa Festival and do it for Make It Central I sh- I'm sure that will go down great <laughs> might get me to the thousand subscribers <laughs> or jail <laughs> or jail <laughs> whatever comes first yeah. it's okay I've asked us there's wood shops in, uh, in jail <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Maybe they need a knob doctor there. <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> Don't think you will be out of work polishing knobs <laughs> going to jail. <laughs> oh. uh, I also done a bit of a to get us out of this gutter uh, an uh, upgrade in the workshop. Um, I tore down all the things I had on my message board, cork board, whatever you call it. Uh, uh, and actually put up uh, with some tape made of made uh, some areas with summer, winter, and a as soon as possible, and 
uh, wrote down all my project IDs that are on top of mind and put them in the correct place. So I know, okay, this is summer projects. This is winter projects. <laughs> this is something I should finish now, work on at the moment. So I can actually have some kind of focus and uh, and try to, yeah, remember what what I what I was planning to do this winter, uh, and not to do as last winter and just ignore all of the indoors projects that I thought <laughs> I would do when it was co too cold to go outside. Um, so that's a good. Uh, that's a good feature. That I, I I've been coincidentally I've been looking for whiteboards this week and you also get these uh, they're giving them away now because they're not popular anymore but you get this uh, it's not a white board but it's like a frosted glass but it has the same function and some of them have a metal backing board so you can use magnets as well oh, yeah. and I thought that would be cool to have in the workshop but it, I do want it at a certain size and then that wall space could be used for tools so <laughs> Uh, but then I also saw you get these smart screens, and then, of course, my mind wandered off because you should have a cal <laughs> calendar in the kitchen, but you should also have it synced with your Google calendar, but you should also be able to write on the screen, but uh, those are $800 plus. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was thinking, is that a project? Can I build it? And it'll probably end up costing more with the uh, worse <laughs> results, so yeah. Yeah, I was starting to think in the whiteboard, blackboard kind of thing. Uh, but then I thought, I have this already. Why not use it? Yeah. All you need is a a big picture frame with the glass in it. You can just put some black card behind it. Yeah, that that's also... Pretty well. Yeah, I have one just over there that normally used to say pasty on it. Ah, yeah. That's all that is. <laughs> yeah. Now it says X1. I don't know what that means, but... Uh... Exit, so I don't get lost. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it's cropping <laughs> the picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't know what date it is and need a sign to tell him the exit of his own workshop. I mean, uh, is everything okay there, Glenn? Should we yeah. start yeah. looking for a replacement, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, and a retirement home. <laughs> no, I'm all right. I'm 49, don't you know? <laughs> uh, Are you sure? Talk, talk, talking of knobs, we should get him a gift. One of these walking canes with the tennis balls on the bottom. It's, uh, that's an old thing people think. <laughs> that's a blind one, isn't it? Oh, that, if, the tennis ball on the bottom. If just yeah. the, the one tennis ball, yes, just the blind one, but one with with four legs, so we have some oh, stability. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, like the one in up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never understood the purpose of the tennis ball. Is it for noise cancelling or is it just for dampening and yeah. Yeah, something like that? I think. Yeah, I, I'll guess. But, Glenn will tell us soon enough what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fitter than you two, buggers. <laughs> Stronger, uh, at least. True yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> oh, I reckon I could outrun you as well. <laughs> yeah, with my knees. <laughs> it doesn't take much. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> yeah, we shouldn't make it a, uh, a triathlon or something like that in... <laughs> In Norway, that would not end well for anyone. I think. <laughs> oh, it's a. Am I sensing a challenge coming? No, it just not. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think arm wrestling goes well as a on a podcast format, <laughs> just because we're on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh... <laughs> I mean, it's, it's still so into the future that uh, we, we don't need to discuss a set list yet but uh, yeah I'm looking forward to getting the the program for the weekend we got some uh, feedback that it's uh, right around the corner so we might get a sneak peek <laughs> soon to know what actually is going to happen <laughs> I don't think it is right around the corner <laughs> I didn't get that feeling. <laughs> the event is just around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> that was what I meant, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully the program is done when the event starts. Oh, what does it matter? Nah. They've, they've done it for a few years now, I'm sure. it's uh, It'll all come together nicely, won't it? 
Yeah. Yeah, and we're going to be there anyway. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah, I mean, five minutes in advance. You're up, guys. Okay. All right. <laughs> put the coffee down and stumble over to the wherever area they have rigged up for us. Yeah. Yeah, I bet they've done their uh, program before you've done our set list, Hobart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it, it got me thinking, though, and I think I remember last year the the three northern makers they they got the audio files um, from the audio technician, and of course, it they didn't have the availability of edit it as they would a normal episode and it was also a live recording so you couldn't really stop and redo parts and I always have that in my mind whenever it's talking about audio or video or whatever Sh- should I bring a backup system should we mic ourselves up to <laughs> have a separate recording and then of course it's most likely going to Make interference on the other system. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm that thinking just, we just go in. Yeah, that just brings to mind KJ when we did our little half pint recording at Maker Central, and we had a discussion. Who's going to record it? You record it, then you record it. I said, all right, I'll start recording. It. And KJ brings out two backup phones. <laughs> <laughs> you <Yeah>. never know. <laughs> Why am I recording it if you've got two backup phones? <laughs> If you had a better mic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the first at least handful of episodes uh, we did here, I I did a local recording on my phone just to be sure that we didn't <laughs> lose my track at least. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to do? Just put your track out on his own? Yeah. I mean, I mean, at least we got mine. You got to put it out there. <laughs> Yeah. But then, then, I mean, after, like, uh, how many episodes was it when we had a big failure when we first... It, was it Glenn's, Glenn's, Glenn's track who wasn't recording? And then we tried again, and then my track wasn't recorded? I don't remember. Who did it lose, lose first? I don't remember, but it, it's not that long ago, so it, it's not in the beginning of the podcast. No, I think, it was a bit... Discussed, bit, bit uh, like, it's been going... Hashtag smoothly for way too long, and then we had the major <laughs> catastrophe. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, at that point, that, that then it would have been good to have a extra recording of it. But no. was that the re-record of the half pint three times? Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> that was welcome fun. to the fucking half pint. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, we, what what we could do for Scarpet Festival and is. Uh, of course, my wife is bringing the kids on the Saturday as well. So if I just strap GoPro cameras at them, they they can be our uh, uh, camera goblins just running around, and uh, we can just use that to accompany the uh, the audio track. So we can make it a video podcast as well, and they can give you a live footage from everything they see there. I could uh, get Michelle on the phone to record it through WhatsApp, and then I could do it like bad audio when we get back. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I mean, what if it was the bad audio crew who was going to do a live recording? How would that work? Because we would just sit on stage like around a bonfire with each and every one of our phones and just waiting for whatever people are saying. And then you have to press your record yeah. and then send and everybody needs to listen to it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And, and, and someone have to be in the distance, not getting any of it, and coming back and having to listen to thirty-eight <laughs> episodes to try to catch up. And, yeah, it's quite funny. Smog Dog or Scarpa Festival, and or both have just followed Bad Audio on Instagram. Yeah. So, I mean, if if that's in mind for next year's live show, that ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, it would be an it would be a nice. Uh, I mean, then we would have to get the crew to Oslo then. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, let's work that angle. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't even get the five that turned up to make a central together for a photo. So to get all in heaven <laughs> to Oslo <laughs> sounds impossible. <laughs> yeah, we should really do a bad audio make a central recording next time. 
how. <laughs> I mean, just to do it the, the normal bad audio recording, oh, okay. but when a lot of us are at Maker Central, right. and some are not at Maker Central, and that makes... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah and, pe- and people are not at the same... I mean, maybe everyone is at Maker Central, but there will be people who did not catch up, so it's going to be a live event. Not live, but at Maker Central. Yeah. Just record it over the entire weekend and see what you get. <laughs> Some really late nights and early yeah. mornings and <laughs> FOMO and all that. I think it would work fine. <laughs> but I'm not in charge of that that podcast, so I, I have no say. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, we're not the poor bastard <laughs> be, be, behind that. So, yeah. <laughs> Whose week is it to edit at Scarpa Festival? And because that's a week off, basically, isn't it? Apart from the half pint, that's nice. Nice for someone. It's a bonus. Yeah. It I mean, you, 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 be over, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Still, we're gonna have to slap the intro on it. Maybe you have to do an introductionary uh, intro before we play the live recording and the half pint. We need to do anyway. That needs editing. Yeah. Yeah, and the half pint recording—that will be the hard part. Surely we could give the uh, audio to um, Scarpa Festival and audio engineer guy to put in front and at the end. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, have have, we'll have some going on stage music. That would be nice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, there to play it live. <laughs> yeah, our recording will do. <laughs> I was going to say the Rocky theme tune, but then it's the copyright issues again. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, our theme tune is fine for going in as a wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we should make masks then and like yeah. uh, t- tight fitting spandex and just. And in the left corner. <laughs> <laughs> and the microphone coming down from the ceiling, and then we have the referee. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's, that's, that's surely nice. a visual to, uh, to end this episode on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds great. <laughs> so, yeah. Carry on talking a minute. I just need to send a message. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were ending the episode. <laughs> that oh, was we... what... Yeah. We're okay. ending it Bye. on an awkward silence. <laughs> 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 Goodbye. Goodbye. See, I, I was going to say, see you at Maker Central or Scotland Festival then, but yeah, there's going to be some episodes in between, so. Yeah. <laughs> see you at the half yeah. point. See you. Goodbye. Oh, this was the most half-assed ending ever. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but sorry. It, but it works. <laughs> I uh, mean, you started it and then you did nothing with it. So. <laughs> yeah, I had no plan. Glenn I, was I did distracted. Not, I did not see the segue coming, so it took me by surprise myself. So. <laughs> <laughs>